Next I'm going to talk about the industrial iron, how it works. It's a Neomoto gravity feed, and gravity feed means that the water is in a tank up here, feeds down through the uh, plastic hose into the iron. The industrial iron is much hotter and more powerful than your home iron. The water comes down into a chamber here where the heating element is. It hits the heating element in the chamber, gets turned into steam, and then the steam is released with this uh, button that's on the handle that you operate with your thumb. Once the iron is heated up, you can release the steam by pumping the red button that is on the handle. The reason you want to pump the iron to create steam is to give the water that's coming into this chamber time to turn into steam before you release it onto your garment. The steam itself comes out of these vents on the tip of the iron. The rest of it is just heat, but if you're wanting to actually steam on your garment, you want the tip of your iron on the spot that you want to have ironed. Remember, the steam comes out of the tip of the iron, so when you're steaming, remember that the steam comes out there. You can steam, steam again, steam again. What that does is create steam here, and then as you move the iron forward, the heat of the rest of the iron plate uh, dries the steam out of that which you just ironed. It's kind of like going into a sauna. The steam relaxes the fibers in the fabric and then the heat sucks that moisture out. The most common seam pressing that you'll do is pressing the seam open. So here we have stitched this seam and now we want to press the seam open. Remember the tip of the iron is where the steam is, so I'm pumping the steam onto the seam there, keeping my fingers away from the iron because it is very hot, it's industrial, it's much hotter than your home iron. Coming forward, steaming, And what that does is flattens, it presses the seam open, flattens it, so that the outside of the garment is very, very smooth. When you're pressing a seam open, a common error is to not uh, finger press it open well enough before you iron. And I'll show you what that results in. On this side, you can see that the seam is nicely pressed open and you think you're done. You'll always want to, while you're working, turn the work over to take a look at what you've done. What I did just here, this is very nice and flat, but down here, do you see how there's a little lip? I have pressed a lip into my garment and that's not what we intended. So take a look at what you've done, turn your work over, and refine and fix the pressing. So that the work is completely flat all the way up and down your seam. Ironing is just as important as accurate stitching. You want to press your seam every seam that you make before you go on to the next step. That results in a fine, thin, beautifully made garment instead of a lumpy one. Sometimes when you're ironing you have to get into a tight spot and you think, how am I going to do that? Let's say I just shortened this jacket sleeve and now I want to give that a nice final crease. You only have to use the tip of your iron, that's where the steam comes from anyway, and you can steam it, let that heat dry it, roll your sleeve a little, go to the next section of the sleeve, hem, and steam that, and so forth.
There are many tools you can use at the ironing board. This particular one is a sleeve board. It's got a narrower shape on one side than the other. And what that can do is um, isolate the part of the garment that you're wanting to press. This is a sleeve mock-up. Mock-up meaning it's cut out of muslin. We're going to test the pattern. And this is how you isolate just the part of the sleeve that you want to iron. And it's, I'm wanting to iron this seam open. And what that does, using the sleeve board, raises and isolates the part that you want to be working on while you're not ironing on the underneath side. For example, if I were to try to do that, without using the sleeve board, I could be ironing in wrinkles on the underneath side. So the sleeve board is very handy. Other pressing tools you might encounter are the sausage and the ham. And the ham can sit up and be arranged in various ways. Not everything that we build is flat to be ironed on the flat board. Sometimes you need to iron over a curve. For example, in women's bodices, we introduce darts and seams and shaping, and it's helpful to be able to iron those parts over a curved uh, tool that duplicates or replicates the shape of the body. And so that's what the ham and the sausage are used for. Sometimes some fabrics don't respond well to the heat and the steam, and so you want to protect them from the iron before you iron them. And that's what the press cloth is for. Uh, often in this shop, you'll find there's a sign on, or a, a, there's a label on here that says this side up. That means that side wants to go up toward the ceiling. It keeps the press cloth clean on the side that's next to the garment. Lay the press cloth on and then iron, knowing that you can't uh, d damage the garment that's under there.